Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back as we continue to support you on your journey to close your knowledge gaps. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified every single time a new episode is released, which usually happens every single week. Tip number two, go ahead and print out your study worksheet. This is going to make sure you stay focused during this snapshot so you will have specific next steps to help you close your knowledge gaps. All right, and then tip number three is to go ahead and pull out your resources. That will be Dr. Caputi's CNE Review Book, second edition, and Dr. Billings and Halstead's sixth edition. Knowledge, how do we ensure that we have developed valid and reliable tools to help our nursing students close their knowledge gaps, number one, and identify what those are is gonna be the primary step with the evaluation tool. But second of all, we wanna map our exam questions back to the content, right? We wanna ensure that we have done our due diligence as a first step to align our content in the course that's aligned with our learning objectives to the actual exam questions, okay? So it's all in parallel that we're doing this work. We're already at letter K, okay? So this specific snapshot is related to the knowledge retention analysis. We're going to explore the five purposes associated with why it's so important that we um, follow these steps that we have identified as we explore what those knowledge gaps are, develop the training plan, and measure the effectiveness of the knowledge. So let's take a look at our thought-provoking question. Evaluating student performance and comprehension of concepts should be considered when exploring evaluation tools. What is the primary purpose of conducting knowledge exam analysis in education? A, to identify areas of improvement for instructional methods. B, is to ensure exam questions are challenging and rigorous. C, to measure student motivation and engagement. Or D, to determine the overall class performance average. We're going to take a look at some content and then midway through, we'll take a look at the best option based on the four choices that we have. So what are those five purposes that we're going to be talking about? Number one, the purpose of doing a knowledge analysis is to identify the critical knowledge that should be retained and shared with others. This is going to help us hopefully decrease or prevent knowledge loss. Sometimes it can be due to turnover if we're in an employment setting, but for the academic setting, it is to ensure that we're doing our due diligence in including content that is going to be meaningful and aligned with the clinical practices that our nursing students will be engaging in. Purpose number two is so we can mitigate that knowledge loss. So we're developing this retention plan after we develop that learning and development plan. The next step is to develop a retention plan where we're scaffolding the learning that students are gaining in our courses over a period of time. We're able to capture the knowledge with our students and conversations we're having with them. And ultimately, when they are in the clinical setting, the lab and sim setting, they are applying these skills that they have learned in the didactic setting. And our goal is to be able to mitigate that through having a solid First of all, um, development and learning plan, which is known as a teaching plan. Number two is how we evaluate and what does the data tell us? And then number three, how do we ensure students are retaining that information or how we are we reinforcing it? All right, so if you chose A to identify areas of improvement for instructional methods, you are correct. Take a look at chapter 25 in Billings and Halstead if this is a gray area or a muddy point for you. This having this as a primary resource, Billings and Halstead is going to help you expand your knowledge and also validate comprehensions of concepts so that when the questions show up on the CNE exam, you are ready and you will feel confident in your ability to choose the best option out of the four choices that you are given. Purpose number three, we want to identify those gaps. That's what a retention, a knowledge retention analysis allows us to do, whether we're in the workforce, specifically looking at the, the clinical setting for the clinical faculty, or if we are in the didactic setting. Purpose number four is to improve our program outcomes. 
Ultimately, we want our students to be successful on the NCLEX. In order to do that, we've got to make sure we have alignment of the course content and the evaluation strategies that we're using to validate comprehension. And we also have to partner with our students to ensure that they are successful as well as with our faculty. And purpose number five is to identify those critical knowledge gaps. Um, that's what an, an analysis allows us to do. Well, what resources are we gonna use to be able to do that? Well, there's primarily two. Number one is gonna be the actual tool that we use to validate that learning has happened. And then number two is going to be that qualitative component. Okay, well, we are having an exam review with our students. We're talking to them during discussions. We may even be engaging with them in a dialogue related to unfolding case studies, where again, we're able to pinpoint, okay, where are our students getting lost? lost? Where is it that they are no longer grasping these concepts that we expect them to be able to comprehend? Okay, so just to recap, Purpose number one is that our students are able to identify critical knowledge and we're able to identify the critical knowledge as well that our students need to know and retain over a period of time. We're scaffolding that learning and we're mitigating knowledge loss by making sure we have good learning plans and that we are evaluating using the evidence-based tool. Number three, we're identifying, okay, where did we miss? Where are the opportunities that we can help our students close those knowledge gaps? And what is that remediation or reinforcement gonna look like? Which brings us to number four. We wanna make sure we have really good program outcomes looking at our NCLEX pass rates, our on-time graduation rates, and even our retention rates. And the last purpose is just number five. Let's identify what are those trends that we're seeing as it relates to knowledge gaps. Tanner's clinical judgment model incorporates several elements related to our students' abilities to apply those concepts in the clinical setting and make decisions about what their nursing practices should be. We hope this episode has been helpful for you. Make sure you review the content in Chapter 25 of Billings and Halstead. Reach out to us if you have any questions, info at drsellerseducate.com. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. And remember to like this episode if it was helpful and to subscribe. See you then. Bye-bye.